Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the rookies for AFLW Fantasy, going through who I believe is the best option, especially after teams are now have now been named at least. We have do still have the extended benches for the Sunday games, but I think they're sort of um, self explanatory to a sort of extent with um, some of the rookies, at least the main ones. There are some that you may stay away from, but I think the main rookies are sort of set in stone uh, for it, and it is sort of a case of trying to find a <laughs> utility mid that does play, um, that is on ball, etc., as I think that'll be the best option through the utility. Um, and I think a lot of the other ones are sort of self-explanatory, as I said. So let's just jump into the video here. Um, as you can see, a lot of the uh, players are one in my side. If you, I did do a team reveal, and I'll just quickly give you guys an update on that since a lot of things changed. But I don't think um, uh, a lot of things actually changed from my side um, too, too much. Um, you've got here... Uh, we lost Sheeran to a quad injury, so we replaced her with Gauldrick, and then we also decided I'm going to go uh, light in the um, forward line, and I replaced Vessio with Smith, and then I just upgraded to Blackburn, because I can see the path now within terms of that, um, and the upgrading timeline, especially if Sheeran comes back before her double, which I believe is, nope, that's the wrong one, her double is on this Excel document. Uh, where's Richmond? Here we go. Richmond round five. I can see myself targeting a potential Blackburn to um, Blackburn to Gardner or uh, Garner or Riddell, and then also upgrading in the back line through a um, through potentially a Thomas swap or potentially through a um, through upgrading um, one of the like Schleicher or something like that, fixing that up because she'll have her double done, etc., etc. But that was sort of the plan there. As Gouldrick, I think, is going to spend more time on ball, even though we've got Hoare named on ball, um, who I really like now as an option. I didn't like her during preseason, but now with um, her having been named on ball, I think she'll be crucial also in the double game anyway. But um, I think she'll be crucial in the first three or four weeks because she's being named on ball. And then during 5, 6, and 7, 4, 5, 6, 7, I think she'll be a pretty good player, but I don't think she'll be that crucial. And then, sorry, in seven, I think she'll be crucial. So anyway, that's just the team update quickly because I needed to do it for you guys because there was a little bit of chaos. We had, um, I think, Sheeran, Abby McDonald, Emma Swanson, and some others not named. You could look at potentially Ella Roberts, but I'm not 100% certain that she will get um, named on uh, playable uh, 100%. And that's sort of the position that we needed her to play uh, for her to be relevant. Now let me just quickly set this up a little bit to get all of the um, rookies that I wanted to get. Yes, we'll have to go through the not playing, I think it is, because they don't have an emergency. The emergency is actually working now, okay. Um, sorry, it's, it's actually the emergency um, that is the one that we want to look at. Um, even though it's sort of like, it should realistically be uncertain, is what um, it should be for those players in the, on the extended bench rather than emergency, but... I guess they don't have that feature um, ironed out yet. Um, Goody, she's the obvious one. She averages a lot. Um, if we go here and we go to 2024 AFL draftees, then we go to... Goody should be in here, shouldn't she? Goody, um, not exactly in there. We'll go to Sandful, as she would be in there. We go here, Goody in the Sandful averaged, uh, what is it now, 97. Um, so yeah, she is just an absolute, I think, lock on field. Projected to play on the wing, but can you really take that much of uh, Port Adelaide sort of lineup? If we go here quickly, go down. They're playing later in the week, aren't they? They're playing here. Um, looking at their lineup, is there a seven fifteen and seven forty four? Why would you do that? Um, but yeah, you can see here she's named on the wing, but you got Maloney, Dowrick, and Syme on ball, and then you've also got Window and when. Wendland, um, so yeah, all three rookies are playing from that that we liked, as well as Sachi Syme as well, who is another one that I do really think could be an option. But I think also you got to think about um, the fact that um, she's four hundred k. I think you can also save some money there. So, but then again, you can also go to her and then just upgrade outside of that. But I'd rather have the money in the bank rather than Sachi Syme herself. Just a little bit of an aside, but we'll get to that anyway. Power got really highly owned. Um, I believe named on the bench for GWS. They play early. 
Um, yeah, she should be looking at this bench. I'm pretty sure there's no midfielder on that bench. Um, so I'm pretty sure she should be uh, fourth on ball there. Goldsworthy named in the forward line is a little bit iffy. Um, but I do think that she gets some on ball minutes. Um, BT, I'm pretty sure named straight into the back line for Carlton here. Where is Carlton? I think they're here. BT named straight in the back line alongside Lawson Tevan. Who both of those should be really good um, options when we get to them. Um, as well as let me just check Finn while we're at it. Finn is named on the, the wing as well. We do like min price wingers as well. So Finn could be, I would probably rather BT over Finn. Just because a winger can be so up and down. Um, and I think BT will probably average 55 in general. So I'd probably put a BT on field. But I think Finn is still a really good bench option. If we do lose Luckins tonight. Which we'll get to. Um, O'Dowd, I actually really, there was something, and I was on the Centre Bounce boys, um, oh, the Centre Bounce, yeah, they're uh, live last night, and we were discussing through me, Corey, as well as the two boys there, um, through it, and just being like, is it a, this was before Team Reveal, it was, is it an actual option to go and just play an R2 that is a red dot, but... Because that was the whole theory behind that was you're probably going to get maybe a, there wasn't any solo rucks or it didn't look like there were going to be any solo rucks um, that were going to get like Schultz last year, even Fleur Davies to a certain extent. Talking about Fleur Davies, when the teams went out and then you look at O'Dowd playing and you go, hmm, where's Fleur? She's not in the end stage, she's not on field. And then that really changed the thinking because um, Pierce didn't get named. And then, um, but, and O'Dowd got named solo. And she is against Edmonds, but she might go 50-50-50. And then that should probably, I would expect, be enough to go up to 450-500k very, very quickly. That's good cash gen compared to the double chance of a, um, of a captaincy when you're probably just going to end up going row bottom into Marinoff or Marinoff into row bottom, etc. week on week on week. And you only really get the double, the only the vice captaincy, captaincy loophole really only matters for like three weeks and then eight, nine, ten. So six weeks out of the ten, whereas you might get a lot from O'Dowd. You might get 200, 200, 250, 300k from O'Dowd, and that can help you, especially in the last round, just get one of your forwards up to something playing West Coast or whatnot, or get swap out a mid. Um, swap out one of your premier mids and get them to a West Coast matchup. I don't know who West Coast played in the last round, but that's just an example. Get them to play Western Bulldogs, and then you just get also another upgrade on top of it. So I just think their cash generation from O'Dell, because she is a solo ruck and she's not playing a, uh, a forward role, that rucks is so much different, and that's why I go for her at that R2 spot. And I think that's why she'll rock it up. Ah, uh, window... Yeah, I think she, in the practice game, I don't have the... Let me actually just do this and then do this here. Um, you'll see window, I'm pretty sure, put up a 48 in just... Oh, 46 in basically a half a footy. If we go to here as well, you'll see window right below Goody. Here in the averages in the sample, 93.8. I believe she also averaged 95 the, wit the year before that. So I'm really liking the look of window here as well. And that's why she is, as you see here, 93. And um, you can see here that uh, Goody is a 98. Is a, if I just go to, say, 150, that should be enough. You'll see there. Let me... Yeah, you can sort of see it there, 93. And the one that's hiding is above 97. Um, and Boilu, 105, is another interesting one that we need to look at um, role-wise. But I still think Window, even though she's on the bench here... Wait for it. Here we go. She's on the bench here at the first interchange slot. I think that she still gets good time in that midfield. And yeah, so that's why I'm really liking the likes of Window. But I also think she's at a decent enough price, isn't she? 348k, that she'll still make cash. But I think she'll be able to potentially, and this is why I want to have the 100k spare, if you do get an option wrong or something like that, and you do have a, a utility uh, mid, then you can swap her out and get her to like a, I don't know, a, exactly, a maybe a, a Breed or a Boilu or something like that. If you don't go there, that'll be the way to go, I think. And that's why I do like the utility mid, because I think the mids, especially if they just have 30, 40% CBA time, are going to be the highest scoring rookies. Finn, um, I don't, I think she'll get decent enough because she's playing, I think they will, from what I remember from someone saying that, that there's going to be 
a better ball distribution. There's going to be some lockdown players, and Carlton, I forget who they were, but it should open it up for Finn, I think, from memory. Um, and let's just look at the back line for Carlton. They're actually up here. They're on the Saturday, Sunday. Fitzgerald, Peterson, Lawson, Tavern, Cordner, and Beattie. Um, and then you've got Finn in the centre line. Yeah, Finn on the wing should help. Um, it does give me a little bit of doubt about Jasmine Dozma, a little bit, but I think she'll be fine. And we'll just have to wait until um, the uh, the teams come out on tonight at 5pm to see if uh, Dozma gets through or not. Or else we'll have to make another change. But yeah, Finn, I'm pretty sure she'll be fine on a wing. She won't have, she'll go up and down. We saw that we see this in the men's constantly that wingers do go up and down in performance. So you have to watch that. But I think she's decent. Breed, an interesting one as well. Let me just show you the Breed in the practice game as I believe she fired off a 76. That would be so perfect if she did do that. I do think you have to look at that and wonder what was the midfield like, given that we didn't see. You saw Gardner play. You didn't see... Malloy played 41. I'm pretty sure she didn't play too much. Um, Ham played um, a little bit. Don't think she played too much. They didn't have Moffat in there, which was probably helping out um, a little bit of Breed playing, uh, as well as I don't know if they had... Did Bates even bother playing? Bates probably didn't play a full game there, I would expect. So I'm just a little bit worrisome about Breed's actual role, given that I think both the opposition didn't have a ruck, the opposition didn't have um, their best players necessarily playing a full game I don't think as well as the fact that I don't know if Hawthorne's best players played a full game so I'd just be worried about her role a little bit um she is named at half forward obviously these aren't final roles and you do have uh Bates Fleming and West there and you I don't know if they necessarily have another mid in this slot here so I think she is one that could really really um profit and she's currently not in my um, side because I think I have someone else in that utility slot, but she's one that I've definitely certainly considered given that I think she gets a 20-30% CBA role and can score 50-55 and that's all that you need out of a rookie. Smith, um, I really she's on the wing as well, another one um, that I think can be really really considered. I know that we talked about um, and this is why I said about Finn um, don't really want to play her. Smith, um, the forwards are a little bit lower average at least um, so it should actually help a little bit um, especially the sort of rookie guy, uh, rookie ones. I think that uh, she will do well and I think I'm probably going to play her on field this week just because she has the same kill to match up whereas Tripodi, even though she might get that 30-40% uh, midfield role might not um, play. Uh, so not might not play. Has that really hard a matchup in the likes of Brisbane? Should correct that. McGee, um, where's she named? Where's she named? Um, even though these, and you do have to take these uh, where they're named as a grain of salt, but I don't like how she's initially named full forward. So I would probably wane off that and probably go more Smith and even like Power if you don't have her. Brilson, I think same thing. I don't think she's going to get midfield time and because I think she's behind... Malloy, Gardner, Hurley, Tanya Kennedy, Ham, even Cynthia Hamilton. And then she's also battling Cooper and also Grun uh, Grunson, I think it is. Is it Grunson? Um, uh, for that small forward role. Um, yeah, Grunden, sorry. Uh, for that small forward role. So I'm just worried that she gets dropped if she has a bad game. But I'm also worried that the scoring isn't there in the first place. Uh, Wedlam, we talked about her. She's an absolute star. She's going to be really good, um, I believe. And at 300k, you could slot her in at that utility if you think she has the role. Lawson Tavan, I think we said in when we're talking about BT that she's named on field. That's a good thing. Vukic, um, I'm probably not going to go here just because I think she's one that plays the full forward role that can ruck, I believe, because you've got Wales there rucking for the hooks. So I'd just go O'Dowd. Um, and then we start to get down, um, no to Watts, Atkins, Atkinson's haven't really looked at. Ramos is an interesting one, is an interesting one, and I really wanted to see how Ramos would do. If we look here, Ramos, she is named, where is she named? Rentich named in the half back. Um, Ramos is named, where, have, have I just missed her? Where is she named? Have I, what, have I just missed her? Uh, Ramos is playing... Oh, yeah, no, sorry. Uh, wrong team. Ramos is named on ball here. Now, and I know that this... <laughs> same same th thing happening. Different team. Ramos um, plays for Collingwood. 
And she's named on ball first game. And you're like, oh, wonderful, great. Now, the only problem is Brie Davies is going to be back week two. She was a test week one. I expect her to be back week two. So, does Ramos lose her role completely? Or does it change to being like the 30 to 40% midfielder? Does she get dropped? How does that work? Do we really want to test that? Is the question. Again, Sydney who have, as we said, Malloy, Gardner, um, Hurley, Kennedy, Ham, and also probably Cynthia Hamilton that can play in that um, that can play on ball. Do we really want to test Ramos there? I don't think so. I think I'd rather go for one of those really rebuilding sides, um, like a West West Coast Western Bulldogs, Port Adelaide, etc. Even a Richmond potentially go to their midfielders and use those who are probably going to get more of a run of it than Collingwood's Ramos, who I think Bree Davies just puts straight onto the bench. Um, so yeah, that's why I would probably go against that. Um, Ryan, midfielder, Richmond. Let's go to Richmond. Uh, Richmond here, Ryan. Um, she's named... Where is she actually named? I should probably... Yeah, half forward. Don't really like that, especially with Ellie McKenzie already named on the bench for um, for Richmond. And you've got Conti, Egan, and Dalloway in there already, as well as the fact that Sheeran is coming back and suspected to be playing on ball when she gets over the calf in... Uh, Quad injury, sorry. So I think there's too many on ballers there that I don't think she'll get the greatest role. And I think already being named at half forward means that she'll play that small forward role. So I don't like that. Um, Kennedy, no. Uh, Baker, another interesting one for West Coast where she named, she is named at half forward. A uh, one that I'm more intrigued about, but then again, also saying that um, to that exact same extent as Richmond, West Coast don't have Swanson. So Swanson comes back in. They've already got Hoskins, Renan, and Lewis. Uh, you also got Ella Roberts, who can basically play on ball anyway, who I'd rather on ball if I was West Coast than actually Baker. Then you have Swanson to come back in. So is she? Re- are you really going to cha- um, get points out of Baker, who's projected to probably be a sixth best on baller for West Coast? I don't think you take that role. I think you're looking for more third or fourth on baller um, for these utility rookies. Um, and then there's Customer playing off, named off half back for Adelaide, just one that we were looking at, uh, me and the Centre Bounce Boys, when we were looking um, for a minimum forward, basically. And uh, yeah, so I don't think it's as bad. I think it's one that you could look at, but I think it's one that I'd rather have a game because I don't know if she's going to play that lockdown role or not. But she's one that's been draft, um, drafted a couple of years ago because of her uh, ball use, I believe. So I think she's one that could pop up Potentially as um, someone in a week or two that it maybe hits a hits a score and then she goes up to like 420k and then you go, she'll make 150 to 200k here in the next one or two weeks because of her break even, jump on her, etc, etc. Boilu, I'm surprised, I'm probably butchering that name as well, I'm probably butchered another 5 to 10 names anyway outside of this, but I'm surprised she also isn't um, highly owned because you look at her stats here and I just want to just show you half of the girls here as well. Boilu here, 105 in the um, sample, and she is named for Adelaide, if we go down here, um, and take these, as I said, with a grain of salt. She is named at half forward, and you do have uh, Waterhouse, Newman as well, so I'm just thinking about it. Her role may, I don't know if there's necessarily a midfielder on this bench per se. Let me actually just check this. I'm guessing this is probably going to be... Yeah, Varnham was the one that I remember going back through and thinking, she's played midfield before, I think. So, um, yeah, maybe she's the fourth midfielder, or is Boilu going to be a fourth midfielder? So, um, Boilu's the one that you could start in that utility. She's up in the air with, like, Breed and stuff like that. And uh, we'll wait until 5 p.m. even for confirmation with regards to the other Sunday team. But you may also see a juggle around with the um, with these teams, potentially their team lists. Um, occurring, which um, would be fantastic if she got named on ball because uh, Levy is another one that I wish wouldn't be named on ball. I wish, um, even though she's yeah a youngster, I would rather Boilu named on ball because that would give me more confidence. But anyway, um, I'm one that probably wants to go there, but I don't know exactly. But she does have easy matchups, so that may sway me a little bit, if you get what I mean. Butterfett named um, to play in the back line. Uh, she'll probably do well. She'll probably average like 50 or so, but 380k. Uh, 
I just don't I don't like it as much um, as some other picks to be honest and I'd rather save the cash than to be able to uh, mix and match my rookies at the end of round one to get the best cash gen than to lump sum it into Butterfant and then have like 20k left uh, Golven friend Guring is another one that I'm very intrigued about She's one that um, currently has uh, me intrigued over Boilu. If we go to, it would be VFLW scores. Um, so you have all these. Um, Gurings down here averaged uh, 71 in the VFLW. But I have to say, I think the VFLW is a stronger comp given all these names of players that are played. Um, and this is why Power goes really, really up there. She averaged 98 in that comp. Um, and you can just see these are a lot of AFLW players in general actually playing this comp. Um, I know that they're split rounds, etc. But you see a lot of them um, up here. Um, so yeah, another one that I'm intrigued about with um, with regards to Guring. And she was named on ball for uh, Carlton. Carlton are a Sunday game. Carlton here. And this may change come around, um, come Friday 5pm. So in a couple of hours time. And you got... Shira on the bench as well as uh, no one else. Anthony as well on the bench as well. So we'll see how that goes. But she is initially named on ball, which is definitely a good sign, I think, personally, for that. Especially playing um, probably not the strongest midfield from um, in Hawthorne's sake compared to like a Adelaide, etc., or a North or Brisbane. But she's definitely up there. Uh, um, and then no one else here really that I'm looking at and going, I think they need to be really talked about and mentioned too, too much. Um, other than probably, where is um, Collier here? I just want to mention Collier as a word of warning for actually a primo. Uh, if you look at Ella Heads' average with and without Collier, it kind of uh, tends to suggest to me that there could be a 10 to 15 point slip um, or switch up, given that Collier is coming back, playing on the wing, and in year one, I know that um, there will be natural improvement there. Ella scored 41, an average of 41, and Collier was there. And in year two, I believe Collier did her ACL, and Ella Heads' average went up to 68. So I just give that a word of warning that there's a player returning that could be correlated to Ella Heads' scoring. Um, and then we go to the emergency list, as there's some, there's three or four key ones that are on the Sunday game. So... Tripodi, Lutkins, and Dersma will lump them all in together by saying that they're all on the emergency list and you're going to wait till 5 p.m., I believe it is, or give or take, somewhere around there, for the announcement of the final teams to see if they get into the actual bench. Um, talking to North fans, we honest, um, they believe, I should say, but um, in the conversation, we believe that um, Tripodi should get that fourth midfield role. Um, and if you look at it, they believe, I think it's just these bottom three players in Savian, um, Zoe, Liz, and Lucy are going to be the ones that are going to probably fall out. But I'm not 100% sure, but they basically did say that they expect Tripodi to get in. And looking at all the other players there, I don't think there's another midfielder. Or at least I need to just check Bresnahan as um, I believe she's a halfback. Uh, yeah, she's a defender. So I think she gets that fourth midfield role. And yes, you'll have Bruton probably back next week, which will annoy um, annoy some because she'll probably go back into a midfield role. But uh, yeah, I think Tripodi can definitely play there. I think she'll definitely make some cash quickly. She may be one that you have to trade out quickly just because she loses a role in that north midfield. But I think she's one that could break out of that north midfield. Then you got Lutkin, same, same game. Um... I don't know about this one a little bit more, and it will probably cause me to swap to um, someone in that um, in that defender line uh, that's a rookie as well. I don't want to go Butterfant, but I think there's some other defenders that we can go to if she doesn't um, line up. But I really do want her to line up because she is on the double early, and double points from a, uh, from her could be crucial, as I think she can average 50. Um and then you've got also Yasmin Dersma in the 105 game on the Sunday. And she's named as the fourth um, um, first fourth on the extended bench. I just don't know if she gets a game because a lot of those girls in front of her 
in this lineup in Shearer, Dalpas, Goss, Moody. A lot of them were from last year and a lot of them are decent players. So I'm just a little bit worried about this. So she is one of the bigger watchers for in terms of game time. And if she does miss, then Tropodi probably just comes on field and then we just look for another forward there as I think there will be forward options. Uh, we just got to do a little bit more of a deep dive before the uh, Swans game kicks off against Collingwood. But I think the thing to say is also that you have, it's a rolling lockout as well. So um, you're able to basically just lock in, for instance, me just going to my side. I know from the Swans and the Collingwood sides that I just want Schleicher. I won't want Berildson. I don't think the role's there for scoring wise. Um, and I don't think there's any other Collingwood players that I necessarily want. So I think for me personally, then it's not too big of a worry if I'm still trying to hunt a Dersma, um, a Dersma replacement tomorrow, as um, it will not be too much of a worry with uh, respect to the locked out players. As long as I go through those players and search through them, just to double check quickly, but I don't think that'll be the case. But anyway, that is a long-winded video there going through all of the rookies. Um, I hope it gets out at, yeah, it should get out at 12, which should be good. Give you guys seven or so hours to look through, watch the video, etc., and have watched the video. Go through, change up your sides as well if you get to this early enough that you can uh, change them up. And I guess I will see you guys in the next video. If you did enjoy it, remember to like, subscribe, turn the notification bell on for all of the AFLW content, especially because we'll be doing game reviews for a lot, as I'll be able to catch a lot of the games. So I'll be able to do game reviews, positional wise, etc. We'll go through that um, and really talk through it. But yeah, just really excited to have this season finally start for AFLW. And I'll see you guys in those videos. Bye, guys.